Hello everyone, Sean McCaffrey back here again. It's weekly wrap up time and there's a whole lot to talk about and that's really been the case the last couple months. So jumping into it as always, starting off with Major League Baseball. A little bit of heartbreak for me considering I'm a Phillies fan, but the Phillies lose to the Arizona Diamondbacks in the National League Championship Series. Game seven, first game seven in Philadelphia Phillies history. They lose it to the Arizona Diamondbacks. All credit to the Arizona Diamondbacks. They went in and they played a great series. Their bullpen was spectacular and they beat the Phillies in seven games, which was really impressive, especially considering that they went down 2-0 in the series. Nobody even gave them a chance and they won it. Complete heartbreak for the Phillies and Phillies fans everywhere. Uh, Nobody really expected them to lose that series and for them to lose it is is just shocking and really, really unexpected. But... On to the World Series. It's the Texas Rangers versus the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's how it's shaped up, and they're already three games into that series. The Rangers, they are up 2-1, to one, so they have the lead, but that one win for the Diamondbacks, they won it 9-1. to one. All the credit to the Diamondbacks, again, the way that they fight is really, really impressive because they've come into this series, again, as the underdog, but 2-1. to one, very close series. Concerning news for the Rangers as Adolis Garcia, one of their best players throughout the playoffs. He hit a walk-off home run in the ALCS. He was the MVP of the ALCS. He might be having he might have an injury, a little bit concerning. I'm sure he'll hopefully play through it for the sake of the Rangers there. Uh, but it will be interesting to keep an eye on that to see if he's going to be available for the rest of the series. And, a, and another note on Adolis Garcia, I'll actually put a link to it, but it is very impressive. I read about his career path and how he's gotten to the point where he's at. He's, of course, been the star of the playoffs for the Rangers again. And it really is a very cool story to see how he made it to the Rangers and the fact that he's playing at such a high level. So I'll put a link to an article that will talk about his story and journey to get to the major leagues and then the fact that he's actually having success at the major league level and at the biggest stage of the World Series and the ALCS. Moving on to the NCAA, one big game this week, the most talked about game this week, uh, was the fact that Kansas, the University of Kansas, knocked off Oklahoma 38-33, to a massive surprise. Kansas tore down the goalpost, took it off the field, a big, big win for University of Kansas. But really the biggest storyline coming out of the NCAA this week was from the Colorado-UCLA game, and it wasn't even about the fact that it wasn't even about the score of the game. UCLA did win it 28 to 16, but the biggest storyline coming out of it was the fact that the Colorado locker room was robbed during the game. So players lost jewelry and a ton of other possessions during the game. The fact that it was robbed during the game is truly unbelievable. Uh, it's hard to believe that the security or what happened there uh, to find that, you know, obviously for those Colorado players to come back to the locker room and see that, you know, they had been robbed is really a shock and easily the biggest storyline coming out of the NCAA this week. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how that investigation takes place there. Now, jumping into the NFL, a lot of top teams did their job on Sunday, week eight, jumping into the Jags and Steelers. The Jaguars are now six and two. They beat the Steelers on Sunday, 20 to 10. Trevor Lawrence, uh, he was my early pick to be MVP of the league, but he hasn't looked all that great. He's the quarterback of the Jaguars, but the Jaguars, they just get the job done, so there's a lot to be said for that, and they're now 6-2, and two, one of the best teams in the AFC. The Cowboys, they got the job done against the Rams on Sunday. Really, the Rams never even stood a chance. The Cowboys were up 30 before you even blinked an eye. It was actually really unbelievable to see the Cowboys jump out to a lead like that but they've done it a couple times this season it's just strange to see those games where they can't get anything going at all on offense the defense doesn't look great but this was another 20 plus point win for the Cowboys and now again they've solidified themselves as one of the best teams in the NFC my Eagles took on the Washington Commanders on Sunday they got the job done 38 to 31 Eagles Commanders always seems to turn into a great game The game earlier this year that they played went to overtime, so this was another great one. Eagles win it by seven, and A.J. Brown, the wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, and now has broken an NFL record for the most consecutive games, over 125 yards. He's now done six consecutive games. He's solidified himself as one of the best receivers in the NFL, and his first touchdown catch on Sunday 
is now a catch of the year candidate. I'll put a link to that. It's a must watch play. It really is impressive. Uh, he is just an unbelievable wide receiver. And really, in my opinion, the reason that the Eagles won on Sunday was because of the play of A.J. Brown. The Dolphins, they dropped the game last week on Sunday Night Football to the Eagles, but division rival this week against the Pats, they beat them 31-17, to so a nice comeback win for them. But there was a couple upsets in the later window, the 425 window for on Eastern time. Uh, the Broncos and Chiefs squared off. The Broncos shocked the Chiefs and won that game 24-9, and not only is it shocking, that the Broncos won, but the Chiefs didn't even score a touchdown. Now, to really put this in perspective, the Broncos defense just a few weeks ago let up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins could have broken the scoring record. They chose not to, but the Broncos defense that let up 70 points to the Dolphins now holds the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, widely considered the best quarterback in the NFL, to zero touchdowns. Now, granted, Patrick Mahomes had the flu apparently before the game, decided to play through it. But the fact they weren't even able to score a touchdown is truly shocking. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. It is any given Sunday. This is professional football and anything can happen. Now, another upset, the Bengals versus the 49ers. The Bengals win that game 31-17. to And the Niners, who started off 5-0, and easily the number one power ranked team in the entire National Football League. Nobody... People thought nobody could beat them, nobody would even be able to touch them. Has now dropped three straight games. Brock Purdy has looked very, very bad over the last few games, and it's very surprising to see the 49ers now 5-3, and three, and they're not even on top of their own division anymore. The NFC West leader now is the Seahawks. They beat the Browns on Sunday 24-20. So the Niners, they have a lot of soul-searching to do. Uh... The trade deadline is this week, so it'll be interesting to see if they can maybe find a way to improve their team. And will Brock Purdy bounce back? I expected him to, but the way he played on Sunday, now a third week in a row, is very, very concerning. And a couple other games to mention, the Vikings versus the Packers. The Vikings win that game 24-10. They're now 4-4, but really the biggest storyline from that game is that Kirk Cousins will be out for the remainder of the season. He tore his Achilles on Sunday. Really a heartbreaking loss for the Vikings. And Kirk Cousins is easily one of the most well-liked players in the National Football League with the fans, his teammates, coaches. So really, it's so sad to see a player like Kirk Cousins go down, especially with the Vikings now back in the playoff race. And just something you don't want to see. Uh, There were some storylines that players were in tears in the locker room over the fact that Kirk Cousins went down. So really just a very sad storyline right there. And then the Battle of New York. The Jets versus the Giants. The Jets win it 13-10. to The game had 24 punts, and it was played in the pouring rain, so it definitely wasn't the most entertaining game of all time. But the Jets, they got the job done, and they're now 4-3, and which puts them easily right in the conversation for a playoff spot. There's some speculation that Aaron Rodgers could somehow come back from a torn Achilles during this season, which would truly be shocking. But the fact that now the Jets are a game over over 500 is really something that's impressive and it puts them right in the playoff conversation and the team the side of the ball that's doing it for them really is the defense even though Zach Wilson has been playing some solid football now on my predictions I just talked about Kirk Cousins I think my prediction there is the fact that he's played his final game with the Minnesota Vikings he's been with the team for a few years now he started his career with the Washington Commanders now with the Vikings really had the best stretch of his career with the Vikings, and I think he's played his final career game with the Vikings. I think he'll get a chance with another team, but he's definitely at the end of his career, and it'll be sad to see that that's the way that his Vikings career ended. Sam Howell, the quarterback for the Washington Commanders, is my other prediction. I think Sam Howell is going to be the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders for the next few seasons at least. He really does seem like the real deal. Watching him against the Eagles these past Throughout this season and then watching him in the other games he's played, he really does seem like a great quarterback. And the Washington team around him isn't even all that good, and he's playing some really great football in what's essentially his rookie year. Now, my one bet of the week, Rams versus Packers next week. The Rams are plus three. Granted, they were blown out this week. 72% of the bets are on Rams plus three. If I had to make a pick right there, I would take the Rams plus three. I do think Matthew Stafford is a very good quarterback. Puka Nakua. 
I think those are two very good wide receivers, and I think they'll have a comeback win against the Packers because the Packers just have not been very good as of late. So this was Sean McCaffrey with the weekly wrap-up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I uh, hope to see you next week. Okay.